You might think you know Animal Crossing, but do you really know the deeper, secret lore behind the universe of Animal Crossing? We're talking, do you know who Maglev Mike is, and why his relationships are always off the rails? Or what about Vicious Vinny? That's right, today we're going way deeper into the larger universe of Animal Crossing at the most obscure lore details that even the biggest Animal Crossing fans may not know. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now one thing that's really interesting across all of Animal Crossing is the fact that so much of the world world is built just through the dialogue that comes from the villagers that you can talk to. And whether they're sharing a story or talking about some sort of interest that they have, slowly the larger world of Animal Crossing grows by these implied experiences that you might not get to see yourself as the player, but it does become a part of the established universe just because another villager brought it up and made it canon. For instance, just like we brought up at the beginning, Maglevs in Love kind of became this really funny meme when Animal Crossing New Horizons first came out because so oftentimes a villager might bring up how Maglev Mike is up to some stuff and apparently there's a show called Maglevs in Love. Based on the information we have about this series, which is mostly just from whatever peppy villagers are willing to tell us, it's a show about living Maglev trains, you know, like those magnet trains that are really popular in Japan. And apparently they're in love with each other and one of them is named Maglev Mike and apparently he takes his relationship off the rails, which is is like a pun because maglevs like the train don't have traditional rails you guys get it still it is a television show that we know that they watch and it sounds dumb but we've also seen reality television in our real world which also can be kind of dumb so i love this little detail that's not the only show that we've actually heard animal crossing villagers talk about besides whatever game show or documentary or performance or whatever isabel talks about during the daily broadcast in some of the older animal crossing games sable would actually talk about a show that she enjoyed watching known as Pointed Love, which was a romantic soap opera about porcupines. She'll mention that characters will break up and get back together and wonder who Esther's mystery porcupine is and how apparently Reginald might survive the dequilling procedure. I don't know what's going on, but honestly, if we could watch a show in Animal Crossing, I think it would be really interesting. Sable also has been a fan of other shows like Pointed Questions, and there's been some other shows that have popped up over the time mentioned by other villagers, but the larger pop culture universe in the Animal Crossing world goes a little bit deeper. You can actually watch your television in Animal Crossing and have a series of different shows that will come on at various times based on the time of day and season or even based on what type of television you have. Of course there's things like regular news, there's a comedy show which just looks like stand-up comedy. For cartoons it definitely is interesting, it looks like some superhero thing but also could be heavily inspired by perhaps the Super Sentai series which is popular in Japan and it's known as Power Rangers in the West. There's some other interesting things that'll pop up like an anime show or a cartoon in some other forms and sometimes you'll hear a laugh track. Still, it's interesting to think that there are television programs that change on an hourly basis. But what about the bigger world of Animal Crossing? Like locations that are implied to exist that we don't ever actually get to travel to or see. Now, of course, we know of the boondocks from Animal Crossing Wild World. We just talked about it in our last video. It was like this location you could donate money to and apparently they were really poor and they might be scamming villagers out of money, but nonetheless, it was this elusive town that may or may not have actually existed. But there's other locations and towns that have been alluded to in the Animal Crossing series that we don't ever get to see, but are apparently real places. One that came up a lot of the time back in the pre-City Folk days, like the GameCube version of the game and Animal Crossing Wild World for the DS, was this idea of the quote-unquote city. Several characters in these earlier Animal Crossing games actually talk about how they tried living in the city and did not enjoy it and chose to move back into the more quaint life of a town. We don't really know what city is out there or what the city would be like because we never traveled to it unless you count Animal Crossing City Folk, but we don't know that the City Folk city is the same city that's being mentioned in the original Animal Crossing games. But we've heard Tom Nook talk about his unsuccessful career in the city to things about Blathers originally being the city but moving to the countryside. Sometimes it's even implied in some of the older letters from your character's mother that the player grew up in the suburbs of a city before moving off to the town that they live in now. Just because of the little bit of lore that we've gotten over time, it does make us wonder if this idea of a city out there is much bigger than the scope of what we've seen in City Folk, and I think that that's probably the safest bet, that outside of the town that we normally experience in Animal Crossing, or our deserted island if it's Animal Crossing New Horizons, there are these massive metropolises out there that one day maybe we'll actually get to see in Animal Crossing. Otherwise, we'll just build them ourselves. Okay, so this next one doesn't have to do as much with locations 
of the Animal Crossing world, but it does have to do with the way that time works in the Animal Crossing world, which is a little bit interesting. As a new Animal Crossing game releases, it appears, at the very least, that everything that has happened in previous games still occurred in some way or another. Not only are there tons of references to previous games, like inside of Brewster's Coffee Shop, you can see pictures of the old locations from previous titles, but there's a couple of little nods here and there in some of the older Animal Crossing games, like Wild World. There was a chance that one of your villagers would even mention a train station with a cool monkey, which was a reference to the first Animal Crossing game. At the beginning of Animal Crossing New Leaf, Rover mentions that he's been riding trains for like 12 years or so, which is a reference to when he originally was on the trains in the first title. So it is interesting as these games are typically set up to loop with the yearly system continuing to move forward, there's still some sort of way that time moves with each title, even though it's never really a concrete device used in the games. All the way back in Animal Crossing City Folk, there was a mysterious character known as a clerk who worked at the marquee. This character would essentially just be in charge of making sure the player paid for a ticket before entering and didn't have too much dialogue, but the two things we do know about this character is it appears that this character was likely a female character and they worked there and made sure people paid. Other than that, we have no idea who this character is, what they looked like, they were always hidden in this shroud of mystery being this ticket booth stand. And to this day, we still don't know what this character looks like, but they are a mystery character, which in a way is very interesting because there's only a handful of these types of characters in existence. I mean, besides the knowledge that there's an existence of the main character having parents that we never see either, we're pretty limited when it comes under characters that fall under this category. All the way back in Animal Crossing New Leaf, if you were working at Brewster's or you hung out at Brewster's, you know, the Roost coffee shop, occasionally you could get unique dialogue from a villager who would talk about going to theme cafes and whatnot and mentions a coffee brand which is unique, something we've never seen in Animal Crossing. Apparently it's called Tony's Dancing Clown Coffee, which sounds very interesting. I feel like Pietro would maybe be involved. Nonetheless, I think this whole thing made Brewster feel nervous and he thinks about offering up brunch to make his coffee shop seem more interesting than possible competitors somewhere else in the Animal Crossing universe. But then that kind of backfires and he ends up canceling the whole plans altogether. I couldn't find footage of this happening with transcriptions of how this takes place online. Unfortunately, it seems like there's still a lot from Animal Crossing New Leaf that hasn't been documented footage-wise out there just yet, but still, a very interesting little tidbit that expands the Animal Crossing universe. There is a publication in the Animal Crossing world that shows up from time to time, specifically when villagers are just like talking about what they like to read. One known as Miss Nintendique Magazine, which obviously is a play on the phrase Nintendo. But yeah, it's apparently some sort of like fashion beauty style magazine that exists and Animal Crossing villagers seem to really like to read it. It's shown up in multiple different Animal Crossing titles and if only we could read our own version of this and see what it was like every month, I feel like it'd be really hilarious. But maybe one day that can happen. Until then, we'll just have to deal with just knowing that this exists in the universe. In some of the older games, you can actually see the close-up of the Miss Nintendique magazine from looking in Shampoodle's shop. However, you kind of have to look at the files themselves to actually see what they look like. Now, on the other hand, if you pull up Nookopedia, you can see there is a massive selection when it comes to publications that exist in the Animal Crossing world. I think they really just kind of got carried away with picking formulas for coming up with titles of books, publications, magazines, and then having the villagers reference them based on maybe what their personality is or what their interests are. This has led to a lot of variety in dialogue that can be switched out with different titles of different publications, helping each villager seem unique. From a popular comic book series loved by lazy villagers known as Captain Paperweight to other things like Business Strategies for Adults, which I feel like is a book that would help a lot of adults in the modern day now, especially Animal Crossing fans who are well aware of the daily struggle of financing and adulting at the same time. In Animal Crossing New Horizons alone, there's a list of 48 possible books that could be mentioned by a normal villager. Some of the best books here are easily You Can Throw Pottery too, which is a Zelda reference, I think. Finding your true catchphrase, which does seem like something a villager would be reading a book about. And of course, my personal favorite, digging for gold. Okay, now these ones, I don't know if they should count, but I feel like they kind of do count. In the earlier Animal Crossing games, if you go to the Able Sisters, you can talk to Mabel about looking at the custom designs that are on display, and there's some default ones that are usually there. Now, these could vary game to game, but usually have a title like Any Town, or Any Isle, or even Tree Hut. These are kind of placeholder names for the default designs that are available. Any town or any aisle is literally just a play on that it could be from any town or any aisle. And 
later on if you exchange details with another town or you put your own stuff on display you'll be able to like put out your designs and other people can come to your island and get the designs and tree hut is likely a reference to nintendo treehouse which is like the internal team in seattle at nintendo so it's kind of an acknowledgement that like hey these are just default places but does that now mean that there are locations in the animal crossing world called any town or any isle like if we're looking at it from strictly a lore perspective this one's a little more abstract but it is interesting to bring up nonetheless also we know from the very first animal crossing game that blathers kind of being more of a rookie museum curator didn't have the actual authority to assess fossils just yet so in that first animal crossing game you'd actually have to go and mail fossils to a museum known as faraway museum and wait a day then they would send you your fossil back with a letter telling you what your fossil was and from there you could choose to sell it or donate it to the museum now what's really interesting though is this other mysterious museum that had curators who were eligible and qualified to look at fossils exists so we know that this is a real location but where is this so-called faraway museum why is that museum so much better than the museum that's on our own town then there's this other interesting aspect that i never really thought about until animal crossing new horizons but how does the internet work in animal crossing surely in the original games it wasn't really something mentioned too often but by animal crossing new horizons we have a character like cj who's straight up a streamer i think i'm pretty sure he's a streamer otherwise he's just very very clever with his puns in fishing and streaming content like how a river streams water i guess he's definitely all about that like twitch life or something like that so it makes me wonder is there an animal crossing equivalent to twitch out there i mean nowadays we've seen technology evolve in animal crossing we have smartphones which already in itself was a pretty unique idea but what do people stream on animal crossing do they stream themselves playing video games are they just the irl streams i don't know there's still a big question mark but apparently cj has a bit of a streaming career this isn't just something that pops up in animal crossing it's become more commonplace in other nintendo titles like in the newest pokemon games there's a gym leader who is live streaming all of her battles or something like that so i think it's funny how nintendo tries to react or interact to the rise in popularity in streaming platforms by adding little references to them in the games themselves okay now let's talk nintendo titles and pokemon themselves because to an extent this stuff all maybe exists in the animal crossing world in the very first animal crossing game you straight up could collect nintendo entertainment system consoles that could play the nes games now with the exception of one special one that would use your memory card which technically never actually functioned for the most part every single video game found in the first animal crossing game is its own standalone i guess plug and play system that you can play without a television set you just click on it and boom you're in the game these later would not return in later titles so we do have to wonder are they still canon are these games that are references to older nintendo titles where do they fit into the universe i think they still should count because there are a lot of references to nintendo titles across all the animal crossing games though the biggest games like mario and zelda and things like Star Fox that have a lot of references in the animal crossing franchise weren't actually games that were easily playable back in the day on the nes animal crossing collection I think that in the Animal Crossing world, maybe the Animal Crossing villagers play games that are made by Nintendo, I guess, to an extent. It gets a little more interesting specifically with Pokemon, because in the original Animal Crossing game, there is an item for like a Pikachu Pokemon toy. I think they kind of allude to it being more like a little Tamagotchi type toy, which they also had back in the early 2000s. But there are Pokemon related references, or at least a Pikachu related reference of a villager needing to at least deliver this object from one villager to another making pokemon in a sense a canon existence in the universe or at least its own universe where there is a pokemon series that has its own video games associated with it that exists in this universe wow that got confusing quickly in animal crossing wild world mr rossetti at some point might allude to mr rossetti on his free time maybe going to the gym and quote unquote going a few rounds with his cousin vicious vol vinny i don't know the context of what this is but i just imagine mr rossetti having some super ripped cousin or something mind you this isn't to be mistaken with don rossetti who shows up as a little joke from time to time we're talking vicious vol vinny who we don't know what he looks like but i can only assume he looks menacing like this maybe now i think that the obvious thing is that this is also a play on the film my cousin vinny i don't know it's a movie from the 90s where two dudes get accused of murder and it's up to their cousin joe pesky who plays vinny who's like a really terrible lawyer to come and be their legal defense or something it was a pretty decent movie i think that this is actually a reference also we mentioned don rossetti who shows up occasionally 
when Mr. Rossetti is out for whatever reason. And occasionally in Animal Crossing City Folk, he might mention that Rossetti is at Myrtle's Macho Mole Spa. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like a luxurious location. Okay, there's a few other things that are also really interesting. Apparently there's a comic book series that lazy villagers might occasionally ask for called Bagel Boy. I have no idea what that's about, but it sounds amazing. There's a TV series that is mentioned by some peppy villagers that specializes in dance music or something. And the show is called Beep Boot Deet Boop and we never see anything about it, but I assume it looks something like this. Okay, in Animal Crossing Wild World, if you talk to Rover, he does reveal something pretty damning about where Brewster might get his coffee beans for the roost, and these locations, which might be canon now in the Animal Crossing universe, are called Espresso Potamia, Northern Quaff, Joe Java Stan, Mokanistan, Mount Grindolia, and East Sweatopia. Honestly, these are kind of clever, and if you're a coffee lover and you needed an idea for a name of your Animal Crossing town or island, I think you should steal one of these and just say you came up with it on your own. There is also a TV show called Slappy Clobber Town you may have heard two villagers talking about. Apparently, this is a series that has 600 episodes, but it only covers the first four books, and it's some sort of like, what I assume to be maybe teen drama, and it's like super overly dramatic, but maybe also a little bit of a slower type show. Apparently, the first novel is called Sing a Song of Clobber Town, and the characters speak Elizabethan English, which might be some downtown Abbey type thing mixed with the whole like teen drama concept. I only imagine this as Elizabethan animalese, which might sound slightly more British than the regular animalese sound we get when a villager talks. But I mean, hey, if this show exists and there's enough fans to have a convention and people can cosplay as characters, then more power to them. Just give us an Animal Crossing game where we can actually go to these cosplay conventions. You may have heard one of your villagers talking about a show called either Fancy Freestyling, which is like like a rap show and your peppy villager who wants to be a star one day panics because they don't know how to rap or another show called Screech Along which apparently is another show except it's about metal and who has the best hair or something like that and your villager claims they would scream the roof off. Lovely. Also there's apparently a game that some characters will play which is called Space Hammer Blaster which sounds really metal. I'd, I'd try that game. There's even another video game in the Animal Crossing universe apparently called Gyroid Joe's Escape from the Temple of the Ob Avocado Princess 13 Justice Edition, which apparently won the premier video game event of the year. It might be based on like G.I. Joe or maybe like Indiana Jones or something, but hey, it sounds very interesting. Also, when it comes to the overall lore of the Animal Crossing villager, we don't know too much about what the villager's family life was like. However, in the original Animal Crossing game, occasionally your mother might send you a letter reminding you to use the bathroom before you go to sleep Otherwise, you might suffer a horrible fate like your poor Uncle Dweezil. Now, I don't know who Uncle Dweezil is, but I do have to say if this fate was so terrible that your mother felt the need to write it to you in a letter reminding you of it, I mean, oof, what does that say? There's some deep, deep lore there, and that's terrifying. Also, apparently Dr. Shrunk had released a DVD of some of his comedy shows or something because occasionally villagers might ask for the DVD volume seven or something, which is interesting too. Who would have thought that he made it this far? Okay, Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. You wouldn't think that there'd be any really super clever references in this game, but there's one that just can't be forgotten. Isabelle's old town that she used to work at. So mind you, this game came out after Animal Crossing New Leaf, and occasionally you can talk to Isabel, who talks about having a really hard time working as an assistant in a mysterious town known as AAAAA. Now, Isabel in this little joke that she makes in Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise essentially describes perfectly the type of villager that we all strive to not be, but we end up being anyways. And I think the fact that there's a mysterious town named AAAA kind of represents a person who's playing Animal Crossing and doesn't really actually care about their town and just kind of named their town whatever they wanted. But yeah, Isabel mentions it wasn't that great and that the mayor of the town just randomly left for two years, which just left Isabel in charge. Yeah. When was the last time you guys checked on uh, your town in New Leaf. 
Is anyone's town here called A A A A A? Or maybe that's just short for whatever your town's actually called. I guess we could argue this one's not canon and more just like this fourth wall break, but still, it's a fun reference nonetheless. These are just some of the expanded lore that is shown off in the Animal Crossing games, but what is your personal favorite? Which one do you wonder the most about or you think needs to be elaborated on even more? Which one needs a full standalone Animal Crossing spinoff game? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video though, maybe consider subscribing. We're doing pretty well, surprisingly, for an Animal Crossing channel in 2023, so we'll just keep on going. Maybe we'll get a new Animal Crossing announcement and things will get crazy, but I mean, things aren't too bad right now either, so let's just keep on going. Thanks for watching the content. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.